Perhaps the biggest unknown impact of the Gulf spill, more than its effects on the ocean and the marine life, is how it will affect human health in the long term. Fishermen's wives often saying that my husband is going out there and they're vomiting and they're very dizzy. They don't feel well at all. They come back, they have chest pains. It's really alarming because if you look at the human health effects of the Corexit and the crude oil, you can have birth defects and cardiac arrhythmia and leukemia and aplastic anemia and all these other permanent effects. They have the cough. That's consistent. The respiratory problems, they have short-term memory loss, and then they have the cardiovascular impacts, the skin lesions all over their skin. Wilma Subra and Mary Lee Orr have been focused on the human health aspect of the spill since it began. They think it has the potential to be a huge problem for tens of thousands of Gulf Coast residents. We love the wildlife and it's heartbreaking to see, you know, the dolphins on the shore that have died, but it does seem to be a little discouraging that people get more upset about a dolphin than they do about a person who's become very ill as a result of an exposure to something out in the Gulf. The fishing community, who was immediately put out of work, desperately needed those jobs with BP, went to work for BP, was not provided protective training, was not provided protective gear, and they came in direct contact with the oil. A lot of these people started being laid off because they became sick. And as we went through the remainder of the summer, the people along the coastal areas continued to come in contact with the crew that had washed in. But what I was surprised about was we were getting calls from New Orleans. I didn't think that the air quality would be an issue in New Orleans. We get calls from people who say, the air doesn't smell right. I feel like there's something wrong with it. And what we found out is that often it correlated on the days that they were burning. We have one medical doctor that's treating the people all the way along the coastal areas, and we desperately need more than just that one medical doctor. The question is, how do we get them medical care? Who's going to pay for the medical care that they so desperately need? And if not, what happens to all of these individuals?